We well, just finished. <laughs> we just finished the mastering, which is really exciting. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. Really, uh, really. You did. Amazing. No, thank you. You thank wrote you it. So, you, yeah. you wrote it, produced <laughs> it, uh, organized the sessions, paid for the lunch. <laughs> I just put the frame around it, and, and we did good. Well, you did a hell of a lot more than that. <laughs> Anyhow, you know, I don't even know how many projects we've done together. It's a lot. It was, I don't know, maybe 10, maybe more. It might be Well, more. You're of your own, yeah. probably almost 10, maybe. I would say so. And then for other people, we've done right. quite, quite a bit. A lot we've of known each other a long stuff. time. I know. Is, is I... my hair white? <laughs> Mine is underneath all the color. <laughs> um, anyhow, so, you know, I came to you with this project. I told you that this is my passion project. Yes, of course. And one of the things that really stuck to me that you said that I loved was that you said, this is like a grown-up album. Oh, yeah. Grown folks music. Grown folks music. Yeah, you want to elaborate on that a little bit more? Well, you know, in, in this day of disposable throwaway tunes, you know, everybody's trying to sound like everyone else. And it's funny, I saw an interview with Matheny and he made the same point. He said, in our age group, it was always about making your own sound yeah. and finding a sound that you could make that other people would dig, but not to be copying everybody. Yeah. So in this world of, you know, highly disposable music and, and throwaway tunes and sound alike tunes, you know, you're a unique writer as well as a performer. So you you know you bring these tunes in and we get the we get the best cats in New York and the world really to yeah. to play on it and we we have some contributions from some amazing arrangers like world it's like kind of world class people that you probably don't know about but you should yeah and they and they were all here and they all threw down you know with love too not yeah. only because it's great to have a gig in pandemic but you know yeah. they wanted to be here all yeah. of them so yeah and i that i think that's a testimony to your writing and and to your personality and you just you you know the way you are in the music business <laughs> I always I, I always show people the um, the Herbie Hancock thing where you're the announcer. Oh right? my god! <laughs> Which is I don't know tw twenty years ago now maybe. Yeah, maybe way more. <laughs> more. That was nineteen. But anyway, Herbie's killing it, and there's one day going yay for Herbie. <laughs> I know. So you know we have that similar thing. Those those older folks that turned us on. You know even your parents. Um, that turned us on to this art form. You know, we just kind of worship them and follow in their footsteps and, and you're doing a great job of that. Oh, <laughs> thank you. All right, this is like going to be the main part of the video. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate of it. Of course. I, I mean, that's not, I'm not making that up. That's well, how I look at you. And you know, I, I sometimes I'm in the basement going through my vinyls and you know, we have so many together. I know. And the artwork is always great. And you know, and also, I was thinking about this on the way in of like, everybody's life has vicissitudes, right? We all have our successes and our failures. We're all fighting the, the war together. Yeah. But your songs are always about the, the bouncing up in the positive way after something, you know, or even just in general, an observance of how the great things are. You know, you don't write many down tunes that I can remember. Most of your tunes like are some uplifting because, the, you know, there's a need for that in the world. You know, the government is not going to save the planet. The artists are going to save the planet. And, yes. the, and the message out there, you know, think about all the people that are suffering from loneliness and stuff from the pandemic. Yeah. They can't see their parents. They can't see yeah. their loved ones or whatever. And, you yeah. know, sometimes music is just the bomb yeah. that people need. Yeah. So, you know, and you always write those kinds of tunes. And you teach a lyrics class and, and like, how to write poetry about those kinds of getting in touch with those things in yourself. So, I mean, that's that's really important and, and good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying. You yeah, know? you I'm were doing it. trying to catch up with you, Dave, yeah, like listen, constantly. <laughs> I don't know where lyrics come from. You know, they they fall out of the clouds somehow. <laughs> I, I, I don't do lyrics. I, I can write some music, but not like, you know, you're sitting down and writing really through composed songs. And you can tell when the guys come in, guys that read charts, like read their butts off, and they go, 
Mm, oh, I see what you're doing here. Oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> and, you know, we work through the charts with the guys, and the, these are heavy hitter guys. Yeah. And then they, they, they bring their own flavor to it. And yeah. that's kind of cool, too. Like, you kind of write the recipe on paper, and then yeah. they go, well, what if we put a little garlic salt? Love. And it, and it just, you know, it lifts the whole thing. The whole and thing. And then they feed off each other in the yeah. room. It's, you know, those of you who don't really get inside yeah. the recording studio, it's a fun it's a fun place to wreak havoc. <laughs> we we, we kind of start with a plan, and if the plan goes off the rails, we go with it, and, yeah. and magic happens. And yeah, absolutely. It happened a lot on this album. We, we had some great arrangers who gave us the guidelines, and then the players yeah. came in and, and took it took it up to another level. So absolutely, yeah. I, I, my my position, you know, in front of the Pro Tools and everything, I'm just a, I'm like the director of photography, so I just get to watch. The movie as it develops and go wow this is just so great i'm just so happy to be here oh man and, and the guys are kind of like right over my back or, or through the glass you know we crowded a lot of people into our little yeah. small studio here but and but um we had a ball didn't, yeah. didn't we have fun uh, it was, it was, so <laughs> much fun yeah. I mean, the whole time i had butterflies you know yeah but, but those like, guys are so you know for they're they're generous too and yeah. you know they're great musicians and everything but they're not going to turn their nose up they're going to help if something doesn't work, they're going to help us work through it. Yeah. Rather than go, oh, this is, you know. Yeah. They're going to go, okay, what well, we can fix this and fix that. And they yeah, did. Yeah, they did, absolutely. A couple, three takes on each tune, we had it, right? Yeah. It wasn't hard. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was only the vocalists that had a lot more. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but you also, you go a lot of places vocally on this album. It's a little differently yeah. than some of the other albums. You know, yeah, I like think a, so. Like a lot of flavors. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Just, and that's that's part of the grown folks thing too. Like we're not like one kind of one trick ponies in a yeah. way. We, you know, we like Brazilian influence. We like jazz. We like rock and roll. We like funk. Yeah. Why not? Why can't we have all that in, yeah. the, in an album? As long as it's not far right and far left. And you know, what kind of album is this? It's, yeah. It's your album. It's a Monday album, but it's got a lot of international cuisine <laughs> it does it does it, it also forays into the classical world which Definitely. you and i both love well we come from there we, yeah. you know, we studied that long, yeah. long ago it wasn't our pursuit but um that's not because we didn't love the music exactly you know? and, and that all the music that you ever play and, and study in your life becomes part of your thing yeah right yeah absolutely you, know, you, you can relate and you know read read jazz charts the way you would read classical music you know, and not get lost and stuff like that yeah it's not that's what that's another grown folks thing is what like it wasn't a seat of the pants jam thing yeah it was composed classically composed compositions that then we asked people to improvise on and yeah and bring their thing to so yeah that's, exactly. that's great to have that structure i think yeah no it, it felt really good to do that and for me it's sort of part of the whole journey musically yeah. for me and yeah. i hope that that's what this album is is bringing yeah yeah i think people are really going to like it and it's it's got a very lush sound right because we yeah. have the, the things that gill arranged with the flutes and you know the the low woodwind thing yeah and then we have the um the string orchestrations yeah oh man we by just, both uh, gill and miho and miho oh, yeah like God. amazing amazing um arrangers yeah 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 so, so and then we have good old funk good old funk <laughs> So we got a lot, it's a lot of good stuff and let's see what people react to. You know, yeah. you never know. You just throw it out and see what, what starts climbing. Yeah. And it's going to be vinyl. And it's going to be vinyl. So With the, your previous. Yeah. One of my engineers that used to work at, at my uh, old studio when I had the big studio decided that he wanted to be a, own a vinyl press. So he went to Miami to buy a press from um, Island Records and the guy that ran the press was there when he went to shop for it. And he said, well, if I bought this press and this building, would you stay and work it? And this is the guy who actually pressed the U2 records and Bob Marley records. Amazing. And that's who's going to press Monday's records. Yes! So it's, it's, in, it's in very good hands. And, <laughs> and my friend Dan Yashiv is an amazing yeah vinyl junkie yeah so he's gonna make sure that it sounds amazing yeah because he's our friend so yes he'll, he'll exactly. be looking over the shoulder and exactly he'll listen to the test pressing before we get it so yeah it's gonna be good it's good i'm so i feel like i'm in such good hands yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so my much my pleasure congratulations Yay, we, we just, just finished it all <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gilly. Happy birthday to you. 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 Happy birthday to you
Happy birthday to you. So I think the recording went really well. I agree. <laughs> And I mean, you have to understand that this has been a dream project for me. I mean, like for years, as you know, we started talking about this like maybe over two years ago. I don't know if you remember. I remember, but I also remember that we had about, I'm going to say 17,000 other projects that we were going to do that never really happened. I went, all right, I guess I'll just never work with Monday. No. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, you've done... Probably other recording sessions or this I believe if I'm not mistaken is my first recording wow. session in the post pandemic universe. Wow. I've done a couple gigs where right. I played in front of people, but this is the first time I've been here and I was really terrified of being in a in a in a room with people, but now I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even care. I don't even care. But can I tell you, it yeah. was so good to see Louise and the gang. You've been working with them, uh, you know, more or less as a unit for a while. Like, you introduced them to us like 20 years ago. I think the first arrangement, well, first of all, I came to Louise through Don Grolnick, actually, because he used to work with the orchestra of St. Luke's all the time. Because... Louise's brother was went to high school with with Don Grolnick somehow. I don't know why she didn't. I don't okay. know. But anyway, <laughs> somehow they knew each other. And I always heard about the Orchestra of St. Luke's. And when I first started to get some orchestration jobs, I said, I'm going to call the Orchestra of St. Luke's. And that's how I started with her. And then when you started doing records, I would recommend them. I recommend her to everybody. Yeah. So, so this is the first time that you, you and did. I, right. together with I mean, it was, for me, just a moment. You know? And she also, they just always bring so much, like, calm and, and relaxation to the thing. And, like, you're in good hands. You go, Gil, no, this is really, mm, I think it would be better if we, you know. Yeah. And they're always helping. And also Joyce Hammond, who I didn't work with as long, but I, I have a lot of history with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the Michael Brecker. And, oh, and from Michael Brecker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, all, yeah. So that's two circles that kind of come together. And then Erico was also a St. Luke's or... And she worked with, on your records, yes, too, right? Yes, yes, right. yes. So The only one that was missing was Richard Lockwood. I know. <laughs> Richard Lockwood. No, but he <laughs> was wonderful, <laughs> too. <laughs> so, you know, right. for me, the thing that was interesting was, like, I thought that maybe it was going to get double to get a fuller sound, you know, to do overdubs. But just the four of them and the way that you arranged everything, it had such fullness already was that in the way that you purposely arranged it, thinking, no, it's just going to be one pass? I never I... doubled anything ever really? in any record I ever did. Wow. And to me, the key of good arranging in general is that you create a big sound with however many instruments you're doing it with. And there's certain rules that I'm not going to say here because I don't want anyone to do it because I want to be the only one in the world that can do it. <laughs> Don't steal my shit, man. No. That's what I'm basically saying. <laughs> I'll come after you. Yeah. I'll hunt you down. Mm. No, but it's something I definitely learned from Gil Evans totally because he could make five instruments sound like 74. No, uh, it really... No, but he does. And yeah. there's certain principles that you can do that make little sound big. A few numbers. Dr. Goldstein on the scene right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd like no, to say, yeah. not doctor. It should be Professor Goldstein. Or is it doctor? How I, do I... I'm a doctor and a professor. Okay, so Dr. Professor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in the Soundless song, I mean, a little history behind that. This is your composition over... Right, so I'll say the story that you had the song called The Sound... And I couldn't find it in my computer, the demo that you had sent me. Excuse me. <laughs> and and um, so I searched the sound, and the soundless song came up, which I had forgotten about, 
which was a song I had composed to the lyrics of Otto Luning, who was the first, um, one of the first electronic composers. He was credited as that, but he also was a great flute player and composer of flute music, orchestral music. He taught at Columbia University, and he's he should be more famous, honestly, than he is, because he really did write a giant body of work, and it's music that is performed. He's he's really on the level of like Aaron Copeland, you know. He's a famous American composer that just not that many people know of, but Amazing. he was. He was there through it all and knew everybody, and he's, uh, and I, I consulted with him, and I also learned how to make that big sound from him. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. he like went, you know, he would look at my score and he goes, the flute here, you'll never hear it in this register. And I, I was like going, what's he know, you know? I don't believe it for like a movie score or something. And then I listen to them and I'm like, they're playing it, and I go, I don't hear the flute. Wow. So would you please play it up in octave? Why didn't I listen to Otto? Right, wow. So, but he knew everything about ranges and how to put instruments next to each other that make correct sense and make it work in a rational way. Yeah. He had a book, I forgot the name of it, but it showed the extreme uses of different instruments in different registers. Here's a use of an E high E flat on the oboe. It's very rare, but you know, and he would like study that and go, hmm, is that, you know, but that's the kind of guy. Like super he would. obscure stuff, but yeah. like in Japanese, we would say otaku. <laughs> he was very otaku. Wow, okay. <laughs> All right, and now I, we've got to probably stop because I know you, you've got to lay down your part, so I'm going to leave you. And thank you so much. For oh, doing thank it. you, this, Mike. No, seriously, this it, is like, it was so great to work no, with you finally. No, no, yeah. When the mind wanders, the soul ponders away from the prism of life. It's lifted wings like a condor, untethered. Floating in an abyss of confusion Contusions on my dreams and hopes By the blows of societal realities And fallen from its tightrope A kaleidoscope of memories and what could be The scope a blur Thoughts caught in a swirl that twirls round and round Look around, focus, hold steady My hope is ready Lifted from a heart that's been heavy By four seasons so deadly And four years so empty I'm ready to be untethered. glad you're able to join me for this very, um, for me, a very important um, interview because you are such an integral part of this recording. We have Miho oh. here. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, so I feel really bad because I should have sent you the mastered final of um, of what you were a part of. Um, right. I didn't, which was very silly of me. So just to explain uh, to those who are watching this, Miho san did the um, arrangements for uh, uh, Ringo Oiwake and also Untethered. And those two are really, for me, very important um, uh, uh, parts you know, songs for this album, but uh, mm -hmm. can you tell me sort of how, you know, you felt when you first got, not felt, but what were your feelings towards the songs when you first right. uh, heard Untethered and Ringo uh, Oiwake in, in, in the rough <laughs> rehearsal right. that I sent you, yes. Right. Um, well, as an arranger, I usually like listen to the original recording and uh, to think how much or how I can sneak in to those original music. And when I listened to Untethered, the um, 
uh, especially the duo recording that you did, um, I was hearing a lot of string sound like behind of that while I was listening to you and the guitarist playing the duo. And then I was really excited. I got really excited to, to imagine how, you know, I can put these kind of things in there, that kind of things there, you know, those kind of things as an arranger. And then that's, that's the, uh, the most important part for me as an arranger to also see where to start from. And then if the recording or original music is inspiring enough, then I'm going to enjoy that. And then I was so sure from the beginning that I was going to enjoy that music from the beginning. So um, I remember that I emailed you back right away that I really like Untethered. And um, so I really enjoyed writing those, you know, string uh, riffs and uh, some, some counterpoints behind of the, uh, um, the music and the melodies as well. And uh, for Ringo Oiwake, I mean, as I know that original song from Japan, and um, it's kind of always challenging to me to see how like tradition I should go, how traditional, like how much traditional I should go. Or maybe I can just ignore any like original part of Japan you know, being a Japanese to go for more further cutting edge for, you know, um, uh, very arranged ring oil work or something like that. So I was just thinking how much of the balance I can go with this like a traditional way or jazzy way. And then also like considering that I am from Japan originally, that uh, I don't have to put too much of myself as a Japanese people into the music. Otherwise it's going to be too cheesy too much of you know traditional music, so that was my main focus for that music. And then glad, gladly, I had an amazing recording of you and amazing you know rhythm section um, that you guys recorded together in a recording studio already. And I listened to that recording, and then I was going to just see if I could add more to that recording or not. And that recording was, a, again, really inspiring enough for me to just get so excited that I, oh, well, I think, you know, I can do those, that, these, and those kind of things on this recording because it sounds so great. So um, that was the process of me joining to this, you know, two pieces. And uh, I'm really, really honored to be a part of this project as well. Well, the honor is completely mine. I was just so thrilled when I first approached you and you said, well, I'm really busy, but, you know, I think I could maybe do two, maybe one, two, and right. so I was able to lure you into doing two. So I'm really grateful for that. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. You know, and it's interesting what you said about uh, Ringo Oiwake, that it's a Japanese, mm. very traditional Miyo song, you know, folk mm -hmm. song, um, and and the question of how far one can go and the question of identity, you know, I'm only half Japanese, but I consider so, myself more Japanese than the other half with me, which right. is Italian. And, mm -hmm. um, and there is th that question of, well, how much do we give a nod to, to the tradition of it? Right. And also for me, with my mother being, you know, Akio Toshiko, and mm -hmm. what she did with traditional Japanese music and fusing that into jazz in such a unique way, mm -hmm. I also had this other uh, layer of me that I didn't want to seem like I was copying my mother, you know, right. where, where she's like, you know what I mean? Where she does mm -hmm. a, 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 a tradition infusing Japanese traditional music into what I'm doing. And so I have to be so grateful to you because you, you help to bring that, I hate to say, but further away. I don't mean it in that, in, in a bad way, but in a way that it made it unique and it made it, you know, its own animal. And I so appreciated that. Oh, great. I mean, it's always something that I'm, well, my teacher, one of my heroes, Vince Mendoza used to say, I mean, he still probably says, <laughs> um, like as an arranger, you really have to think how much of yourself to put into your arrangements. Because sometimes if, if clients don't want you to put too much of yourself, then that's not going to work as an arrangement. 
So it's always a, a great point for me to think like how much of myself getting into that music. And then like, you know, part of me wanted to go for more, you know, uh, cutting edge way. But then at the same time, if that's too much, then it's the music is not enjoyable anymore. Or like, you know, that's going to lose the um, its identity. And uh, yeah, so I'm so glad to hear that from you that um, you enjoyed it, that balance of it because that was kind of my, you know, uh, answer after considering how much of I can do or not. So, yeah. yeah honestly, I mean, in the studio watching you, um, you know, conduct the strings from the control room and they were inside the, you know, the, the box. <laughs> it was really mm -hmm. a thrill. I mean, you, it's so silly for me to say, but it was my first time seeing you in action, you know, and it's mm. like, man, she really knows what she's doing and you have total command of it. And it was, it was fantastic. <laughs> and it was so oh, great. Because, like even in Untethered, you know, towards the end, um, it, it, um, we were doing chord by chord, which was supposed to be a full uh, bar, but mm. it's set up an awful lot. And you're like, oh, okay. And in one pass, you like, you got it. You felt it so quickly. And it's like, wow, I was just so impressed with how quickly you, you just instinctively feel music. It's, it's really amazing. Right. Well, that means that, uh, you know, we have a great chemistry as a musician and then, you know, I, I really enjoyed that kind of magical moment to make music with other people and then I think that was um there was a really great vibes in the uh, recording studio that day with the uh, Dave's the, I mean uh, the engineer as well and yeah um and then uh, of course the uh, string quote that did a great great job they were really amazing yeah Dave mm -hmm. Darlington and also you brought in Steve Wilson who like every take was fantastic it's like right oh, God. <laughs> but then it was also really funny that uh, we you and I also got the same result right after we had like a several takes from Steve and we liked the exact same take yeah yeah it's true. and uh, yeah, so yeah, without true. Steve saying anything and then we were like yeah we're gonna take that one <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> so <laughs> no that was fun and yeah, yeah thank you so much for you know for for doing this I know you're in Japan what are you doing there uh i'm gonna have a concert and then some like a press release things yeah for you for your new album coming out or like a new projects and a new concerts here for like a uh, interviews and magazine interviews and all that so oh cool well good luck and i hope uh you. now that you're out of quarantine you're able to eat lots of good things <laughs> yes sushi time for me for sure <laughs> Okay, okay, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank が、あの、こういうズームしていただいてるんですけど、よろしくお願いします。よろしくお願いします。ありがとうございます。こちらこそです。というか、あの、今回も本当に素敵なプレイをあのしていただいて、しかもやっとやっとえ、リンゴを追
<笑>あのそれ私の方からもうまずあの 100% あのこれがこの機械ができたっていうこのレコーディングができたっていうのはその機械で企画でそれ飛鳥ちゃんがリンゴ追い分けを私に紹介していただいたのがそうなぜそのを、えー、なぜその曲を選んだんですか、うんえー、とまずコラボレーションっていうのになってどういう曲がいいかっていう提案をするときにあの民謡っていうんですけど日本の伝統的なこう歌唱みたいなのを民謡っていうんですけどこの「りんご追い分け」っていうのもその民謡の中の一曲みたいな感じなんですけど、まあ、その民謡を新しいものにこう新しいジャンルに昇華するみたいなのが。結構いろんな方されてるんですけれどもじゃあジャズでしかもマンデーさんがこ,この追い分けをこうアレンジしたらどういう風になるんだろうと思ってあの提案させていただいたっていうのがまあきっかけです。いやとってもあの嬉しいプラスアスカちゃんの想像感がそこまでいってたっていうのがあのアスカちゃんのその伝統な音楽をやりつつ未来とかあのどういうふうにこととか日本の,あのトラディションそれはあのもちろんそのやってることの世界の中でのトラディション抜きでりんご追い分けの民謡の音楽がどういうふうに未来に持っていけるのかっていうのがすごく素敵だなと思ってあの責任的に<笑>、はい、<笑>あのでもどういうふうに料理したらいいんだろうとすごい考えさせていただいてあの新しいものが生まれたっていう感じで、はい、本当にありがとうございましたいやもう初めてマンデーさんのアレンジ聞いた時にもうめちゃくちゃ感動してすっごいもう<笑>わおもう本当にわおって感じですごい嬉しかったです,ですありがとうございます、はい、まあ私の方からね<笑>ことという楽器と一緒にあの参加するのっていうのが初めてだったので、はい、どういうふうに料理できるのかっていうのが正直すごく狭いところに入ってたんですよ。あのもちろん、はいはい、<笑>日本食屋さんに行ってトントントントンとかダーダーダーダーダーとかないかそれぐらいしか行ってなくてでもあの飛鳥ちゃんはすごいあの幅広く。はいあのあの考えも想像感もあるしプレイもできるし、うん、あので今回のレコーディングもこの5年間いろいろライブの演奏を、うんまあ、日本だったりニューヨークだったりロンドンだったり一緒にさせていただいて、はい、今回のレコーディングでまたをまたアップグレードしたっていう感じなんですけどその、はい、そのなんていうのかなあの考え方をちょっと教えていただけますかあもちろんですもちろん、えー、と一番最初にコラボレーションした2017年は本当にもう自分としては超チャレンジでなんかこういろんなジャンルの音楽におことをこう入れてみるっていうのは、まあ、自分のこう活動としてすごく大事にしていたんですけれどもその中でもマンデーさんやっぱり私がマンデーさんの曲をまず知ったのが。あの大学卒業してすぐぐらいだから21か2ぐらいの時だったと思うんですけどその時にもう自分は全然邦楽おことの世界の曲しか知らない中でマンデさんの曲聴いてうわめちゃくちゃかっこいいおしゃれここにどうやったら入れるんだろうってその時から考えてはいたんですよ。なんだけど実際どういうふうにしたらいいかわからないっていう中でズンズンズンズンってきてで2017年コラボレーションまさかのしかも超憧れのマンデーさんとできるってなってうん一番その頃大事にしてたのはそのおことが他の楽器と同じようなことをしちゃダメだなっていうのはすごい思っていておことにしかできない旋律だったりとか、まあ、おことの世界だと節回しみたいな言い方するんですけどその節をいかにこのジャズのミュージックに入れられるかなっていうのが最初のトライアルだったんですが、まあ、そこから、まあ、2017年から毎年コラボレーションする機会をいただいて。どんどんこう練っていくような感じになっていったかなとは思ってるのでそのおことらしさとなんかこう新しさみたいなのが、うん、表現できたらいいなと思ってやらせていただいてます。いやえその節回ししのこととをもうちょっと説明ててていいいいただいていいですかあもちろんなんか
そのいわゆるその西洋的なメロディーとかっていう概念とはまた違っておこと独自のそのフレージングみたいな世界があってそのフレーズの組み合わせによっておことってあの曲ができてたりするんですけどこれってまたおことの個性だなというふうに私は思っててなんかそれをあえて新しい音楽とか今の音楽にこうぶつけるっていうのをするっていうのを私はちょっとこう考えながら、うん、やらせていただいてます。うん、わあ素晴らしいですよ本当にあの、ね、最初の頃えー、自分の中でどういうふうにできるのかって考えながらなぜかアリス・コー・トレインアリス・コー・トレインコー・トレインの、うん、奥さんのことを思いついてすっごく大好きなレコーディングエレメンツっていうのがあるんですけど、うんうん、アリス・コー・トレインとあのジョー・ヘンダーソンの入ってる素晴らしいレコーディングで、うん、大昔、うん、メジャー・フォースの,あのトシちゃんから、うん、あの教えていただいたレコーディングでその1曲大好きなすごいもうあのネバネバした曲の中で<笑>まあアレス・コーチンがピアノではなくハープであれをしてたのが、うん、ことってハープ的なことできるのかな、うん、あれ<笑>でも、うん、そういうのちゃんとやってるなできるんじゃないかなとか思っててでも,、はいはいはいね、でもそれ以上に一番びっくりしてたのがあのアスカちゃんのリズムがもうこんなに、うんもうびっしり中にポケットに入れるっていうのがすごいなっていうのがあ、まあ、私もそう思ったしバンドメンツもねいろいろファンクだったりすごいグルーヴ感のあを大切にしてるミュージシャンたちもびっくりして、うんそ,うはい、そ,れそれに対してどうなんですかねそのあのことの最初多分トラディションをベーシックなことを多分ね、うんうん、あのそこから始まってそこからどんどん今の世界に入ってると思うんですけど、うんうん、どうなんですかグルーヴっていうのは<笑>いやグルーヴはありがとうございますめちゃくちゃ嬉しくて自分のおことのテーマで一番大事にしてるところである意味グルーヴって伝統的な音楽の中にはないニュアンスなんですね、えー、もうどっちかっていうとポンって音があったらその次にいつ次の音が来るかわからないその間の、ね、間をどういうふうに取るかみたいなのがこう楽しさだったりするんですけどもう全然こうコラボレーションする時の感性って違ってやっぱグルーヴ感ここ心が踊るとかこう心臓がこう脈打つような感じはおことでもチャレンジできるんじゃないかと思ってあの皆さんをすごくこう。注目してこう盗めるようにして頑張んなきゃと思ってやってるので皆さんがそのこと私のこと聞いてグルーブ感じるって言ってくれるともう一番嬉しいです。いやー素晴らしいです本当に,本当に、うん、いやいやこちらもえー、っとまあ短いあのインタビューをさせていただくっていうことで結構長かったんですけど、はい、今後のあすかちゃんの,、うん、あの何あの活動とか音楽の考えどういうふうに言っていきたいっていうのをちょっと教えていただけますかあはいまあもう一番最初から変わらないことはトラディショナルトゥーモードもう伝統こそ今であれっていうことが私の、まあ、活動の主軸になってるのでその古くからある美しさっていうのはちゃんと守りながら。私にとっては古典曲みたいなものがあるんですけどそういうものを守った上で新しいアプローチみんながこうワクワクするようなことをどんどんやっていけたらなと思ってやらせていただいてるのでもちろんマンデーさんとのコラボレーションももう最高に本当に嬉しいので<笑>ありがとうございましたこちらこそですありがとうございましたはい、はい、ありがとうございますじゃあえー、っと早くも、えー、ねあすかちゃんも実はあの最終の<笑>はい、ミックスとか聞いてないんですそう。そうなんです。だからめちゃくちゃドキドキしてます。<笑>大丈夫。<笑>まず送らなきゃごめんなさい。そういうのすごい思い出しちゃった。ごめんなさい。送ります。ぜひお,ね、お願いします。<笑>ありがとうございます。楽しみにしてます。ドキドキと。はい、じゃあよろしくお願いします。<笑>ありがとう。レコーディングを止めますね。はい。おはようございます。
Yeah, I think, I think, I think your, your head is, your, your head is uh, super fine. Um, okay. It's rolling? Okay, okay, yes. okay. <laughs> My name is Madoka Sagaya, and uh, I'm a music production coordinator. I currently work with Record Store Day Japan. Okay. Uh, so how long have you been working in the record store? I've been working since mid-90s. Wow. <clears throat> and I met Monday around 96, 97. Yeah. <clears throat> like record shop or record no, shop? No, actually, <laughs> I was working at the uh, record label slash uh, music production called King Street Sounds back then. And Monday, and her then partner, Shinichi Osawa of Mondo Grosso, came in to the office. They lived in Tokyo, but they came to New York to work with uh, engineer Dave Darlington. And uh, they were in town meeting with people, and that's when I first met with them. Wow. Um, so, so what happened with King Street Sounds and, um, and Monday so, and Shin? So King Street, we at King Street ended up uh, coordinating for their uh, recording projects. And uh, several Mondo Grosso recordings and then Monday solo uh, albums, which were uh, all of them were recorded in New York with engineer Dave Darlington mostly. So uh, I got involved with the production and uh, including, you know, the booking the studio musicians. Right date, stuff so, like so that. So she was a whole part of that, that late 90s, early 2000s, what would you, would you call it drum and bass? Or? No, as a jazz. As yeah, a jazz, um, yeah, Mande Michiro and Shin Osawa, they were, um, I was a huge fan, I was a huge fan of them. And to me, they were um, prince and princess of a Japanese as a jazz yes. scene. So I was <laughs> so excited to meet them. Wow. And so, I, I was so lucky to, you know, end up working with them. Wow. So, so tell, me, tell me about like an adventure that you had. Did you go tour with them? Or no. no. Uh, all the projects were based in New York. Everything was done in New York. But of course, I, when I went to Japan, I got to meet with them. Uh, you know, it was their home base uh, back then. It was Mondays. Monday since moved to New York. But yeah, I got to hang out with them in Tokyo too. Wow. So many yeah. of the projects. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and and from that you uh, you developed this really special friendship. You want to tell us about that? Sure. Um, and then uh, I consider uh, I consider Monday my uh, good friend. She's been based in New York since then, and uh, she's. Kind of my, she's my neighbor of some sort. <laughs> so yeah, I, I got to um, meet with her on um, personal uh, level as well. Of course, many yeah, adventures. many uh, great dinners. She's a great chef. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, wine, you know, wine tasting, and uh, you yeah, know, she's, she's yeah, just, she's just mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. Um, if you want to say like one word about Monday that describes like her inner beauty uh, and her, her soul and persona, what would you, what word would you say? One word would be, um, hmm, one word. Warm, is that too boring? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think, well, yeah. I mean, sometimes she can be hot. Yeah, she can be hot, yeah. But no, I, yeah, seriously. Yeah, no, let, let me think about it. Um, one word, I thought, yeah, one word. Um, radiant, radiant. Yeah, I would consider uh, one word for Monday would be radiant. Yeah, yes. Um, so, so um, last question, uh, just tell me, uh, have you heard about Enzo and the new record that she's producing? I know of the project, but I haven't heard any sound of it. Really <laughs> I'm so talk. looking forward to it. <laughs> no gossip? No, nothing, huh? no, I mean, I, you know, I know it's been made right now, so I try not to, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I understand that the artist, while, it, within the, you know, while doing the project, is a really still, you know, sensitive time, production time, so I try not to bother, you know, her with the uh, details, you know. Okay. Yeah, but I'm very looking forward to uh, listening to a new record. And I heard, I heard that it's going to come out on vinyl as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know a little bit about vinyl as well. Yeah. So. Yeah.
Okay. Uh, what do you think? I think it's great. Uh, vinyl is doing. Uh, more people are listening to music on vinyl these days. So, and uh, it really fits her style of music, music too, and her fan base, I think. Right. So I think it's a very smart decision to release this on vinyl. Um, well, especially anything else you want to add to this beautiful uh, radiance? That's the word you use, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, soul? Um. She's been an inspiration for me and many other people, the music lovers, listeners, uh, Japan, international, everywhere. And I just hope that she keeps doing what she is great at for many more years to come. <laughs> you went a little off mic there. <laughs> Is this a Miles Davis album? <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be the B, that's gonna be the B real, the behind the scenes. <laughs>